This is the Doppler effect and red shift and blue shift, which is the same as the Doppler effect except with light. There was a guy called Doppler and he had perfect pitch, which means if you played a C on a trombone or a trumpet or something, he could say, that is a C. And uh, he was also a scientist. He used to sit around train stations, uh, listening to bands on the trains play as they went by. They used to have bands in those days, no entertainment. And uh, he, he figured out that basically, um, as the, the trumpet went by, it went from a really high pitch to a low pitch. And he was like, ah, I noticed that that happens often when the train is going very fast. Not so much when it's going slow. I shall be famous. I went to look for a steam engine and then I immediately gave up. Um, they don't make them anymore. So I had to use my Nissan Primera, a modern steam engine, uh, to demo this. Okay, so listen to the frequency change here. High, low. There we go. Doppler. So what's the deal with the sound change? Well, firstly you gotta know, high notes, they have high frequency. And conversely, low notes, like a bass guitar, have low frequency. See, you're talking squeaky high mass, high frequency, rumble of an earthquake, low frequency. Add that knowledge to this. If something's not moving, the sound coming out of it goes in nice, concentric circles. Look at that. Spreading out like you threw a stone in the pond. Whereas, if something's moving, it tends to chase after its own waves and uh, catches up a little bit. And you see it kind of bunching up there at the front. So, that's if it's moving. So what we're saying here is that up the front, it's going to be pretty highly compressed. Whereas at the back, it's going to be more spaced out. You can see that right there. What this means is that if I was standing in front of that, and there were waves coming right at my face, let's say each one of those waves is a slap, I would feel slap, 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 slap at the front, whereas at the back, it's going to be less frequent slapping, just kind of like slap, slap, slap. I would prefer to be standing there at the back. Um, all right, so more frequent, the way you say that is higher frequency. Wait a second, lots like the high frequency pitch. It's exactly why it sounds higher. And then as the car goes by, it's more spaced out. Uh, so the sound is a lower frequency. You get the lower, lower sound there. So listen for it here. We're going to go high, middle, and lower. And the reason I have actual freaks in there, because for a tiny little instant, if it was just parked right in front of me, as I went through the middle, uh, the midpoint is the actual frequency. The whole point of this is that you can hear speed. You can listen, close your eyes with a blindfold, and by something going by, you can tell what speed it's going, which is magic. Don't get this confused with loudness. Loudness is how loud a note is. Yeah, the car is getting louder as it comes towards me and quieter as it goes away. That's amplitude. No, that's how high the little crests are. No, we're looking at how stretched out it is. That's the, the high pitched or the low note. That's frequency. I mean, you could have a big rumble from an earthquake. It could be... Uh, you know, if it was close up to you, it's going to be high amplitude, and far away, it's going to be low amplitude. But it's still going to be a really, like, low-frequency rumble. So, frequency is what we're talking about here. Never mind amplitude. So, if you look at here, you see uh, I've used some software to uh, figure out the frequency shift there. You see a little shift, one line, then going from another. Um, there's many layers here, because sound is more complicated than than uh, just one one frequency. Um, 
This is why everyone singing it a C sounds different. So if Justin Timberlake sings a C and I uh, sing a C, you'll see uh, that I, I sound a lot better. And that's my proof. So if a policeman was sitting around eating a donut or something and listening to this, they would uh, they'd be able to just listen and hear the speed. Um, well, they had some funky software. We're gonna we're gonna do that now. And to do it, we are going to uh, look at the front of, of the wave there. Twenty hundred hertz is what I measured for frequency, and at the green arrow at the back, um, I got seven hundred hertz, and that is the change in frequency. You can also, yeah, uh, you know, get the midpoint of the tune if you want to find what the actual note was, which is that. And then, uh, using all that data that I picked up, I can whack it into a formula. Um, you don't need to worry about the formula here, but this is the thing Doppler got famous for. He took all that information and made it a massive version of it. So you can work out pretty accurately the speed of something. And this is just me bagging in at the numbers that I got. And I found that my speed was exactly one kilometer under the speed limit. Look at that. Good citizen. Um, so yeah, was not breaking the law as long as you let pay Trump while driving. And then remember I was saying that I, I couldn't find a steam engine when I looked? Well, the weirdest thing then just happened. It's as if the ghost of Doppler by just to say you're pretty sad Mr. Murray Doppler high five <laughs> uh, I was supposed to be talking about red shift and blue shift so I better get on to that um yeah, what else is a wave? Light. Light is a wave, of course. And what we were saying with sound was that with a really high frequency, we have a really high pitch. So frequency is just pitch. Um, and it just so happens that something similar occurs with light. When uh, you have a light wave, the frequency of that wave is actually what defines its color. So, yeah, it actually makes sense. Because if you look at the... Uh, the electromagnetic spectrum here, that's a nice picture, and uh, you'll see that the more squished up the wave is, the higher frequency, it is more towards the blue end of the spectrum. So what we're saying there, boy, is that blue light, well, all blue light actually is, is just light that's squished up, or light that has a higher frequency. You should say higher frequency, not squished up. Um, and therefore, red light is just stretched out light, or red light is uh, light, with a low frequency. Doppler's thinking, wait a second, high frequency, low frequency, you know, I know something that does that. So it turns out that not only do uh, objects that emit sound have this weird frequency shift, it also happens with light. So if the galaxy, say if you look through a telescope and you see this galaxy, and it's heading towards you really, really, really fast. Um, then, if it's emitting all this light, uh, the light in front of it should be a bit more bunched up, um, squished up like the, the sound waves coming out of a, a car or my trumpet. So um, that would mean that the light in front of the galaxy, if you were sitting there, you should see it as what color? Think about this for a sec. you're gonna see it as blue because it's squished up and uh, if it's high frequency um, that's blue. Blue is just high frequency light. So uh, the opposite of that of course would be yeah red light. Um, so if it shifts more to the, to the red um, 
then it's, it's a lower frequency. So that, that would happen if something uh, was going away from us. So you see these um, in astrophysics a lot. Things that look red in the sky are going away, and things that look blue in the sky are coming towards us. And, you know, it's not just galaxies now. It's just how it happens we can see galaxies. But, uh, I don't know, if you were to put up a giant frog in space and launch him away at the uh, closest speed of light, he's going really, really fast away from us, uh, you would see a big red frog um, if you could so see him. So, in summary, if a galaxy is getting away, going away, it's going to be redshift. Um, if it's just sitting there, not really doing anything, or maybe it's going around us in circles and it's the same distance, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be the same color, it's not going to do anything. Um, and if it's coming straight for us, it's going to be blue. And if it's coming straight for us even faster, it's going to be more blue. So we could say in summary, the proper way to say this maybe, would be a uh, redshift is when an object is moving away from the observer, that's us, um, so fast that light shifts to a longer wavelength, more red, that's the redshift. Now, I should also say, and this is equally true, that that galaxy, yeah, it's going away from us, but we could be going away from it. You know, it's relativity. Who's to say who's moving? It doesn't really matter. One object's moving away from another, it's going to be redshifted, okay? Uh, if the galaxy is sitting there with no speed, there's no shift, it's just stationary. And uh, if it's pummeling towards us really, really fast, uh, an object moves towards the observer, or the observer towards it, so fast that light shifts to a shorter wavelength, so it's going to be more blue. So which of these, of the Death Stars, is moving away at the greatest speed? Can you tell by looking at their color? Well, it's not A. A is gray. It's supposed to be gray. If you haven't seen Star Wars, it's your own fault. B is blue. How about that? Uh, no. Blue shift means it's coming towards us. Blue is a higher frequency color. C and D are kind of ready. Although C is more red. So, I don't even know what color D is. I, I don't even know what the word is. Monkey orange or something. Uh, yeah, so there's no monkey orange shift. I'm going to go with C. C has got to be moving away from us. Um, that's a red shift. Bye-bye, C. And here's uh, one more crazy thing to think about. If, uh, if you come to a red light, you're sitting there, and uh, let's say your car is... Um, is pretty fast and can do point nine the speed of light, like in a second or whatever. Um, what happens to the color of the red light if you decide to put pedal to the metal and go straight towards it? Would you technically be breaking the law? The answer is the answer is yes. You would definitely be breaking the law. You'd be breaking the speed limit. Not only that, you'd be breaking your face. The acceleration would kill you instantly. Um, anyway, <laughs> my, my point here was that, yeah, you'd find the, the color of the light actually changes. So you could argue with the policeman, if you weren't dead, that uh, the uh, the light is not red and it's it's more blue because it blue shifted. Um, and that's because, remember what I said, you know, it doesn't, the light's not to be going towards you, you can be going towards it. It's the relative motion that counts. If you come together, it's going to be blue. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay, and that's it. We're done. And just as a, a summary, um, yeah, I obviously don't break the law. Never go fast and speed of light. You'll go back in time. It's dangerous. Um, terrible things could happen. And uh, that's it. Yeah, so. And also, don't play a trumpet at the side of a car. I didn't actually do that. That was my dad. Thanks, Jamie. Bye.